Welcome to this week's episode of Coffee with a Journalist, brought to you by the team at One Pitch. Are you looking for a more efficient way to find and pitch the right journalists? Head to our website at onepitch.co to learn more. Our guest on today's episode of Coffee with the Journalist is Andrea Gonzalez Ramirez from The Cut. As a senior writer, Andrea reports on systems of power, specifically around gender issues and abortion rights. During the episode, Andrea explains her beat and why it is difficult to pitch, how she approaches stories through one-on-one conversations, she talks about the newest spring fashion issue at The Cut, and more. Let's dive in. Welcome, everyone. This is Coffee with the Journalists, and I'm Beck Bamberger, a publicist who is always looking to figure out how better to make friends with the media, even though really we're not friends. We're here to just do our jobs and do them peacefully and with respect. So that is why we have this little show here. And with us today is Andrea Gonzalez Ramirez. She is the senior writer at The Cut, which is so fun, Andrea. And I'm very excited to chat with you because I'm a fan. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Real quick, Andrea, just in case maybe people aren't as familiar, how would you describe The Cut? Because it's in part of The New Yorker. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we are a vertical of New York Magazine, and we're a digital lifestyle publication. Our mission is basically to meet readers where they're at and foster forward-thinking conversations about a bunch of issues they care about, whether that's politics, feminism, work, money, style, relationships. So yeah, uh, we do a ton of original reporting, service pieces, and I think I work with a group of really amazing writers. So yeah. Mm, mm. Mm, I love that. It's great to be working with smart people around you. However, I also feel you have to be viciously smart to even survive as a journalist. So by default, you'll be working (laughs) with smart people. That's just my personal opinion. Andrea, how is your inbox though? My inbox is a little crazy. I'm not going to lie. That's (laughs) okay. That's okay. How do you manage it? As best as I can. (laughs) I tend to check it in the mornings at noon and before I log off in the evening. I do not check it on the weekends. I'm I'm trying to be more disciplined about that. So Mondays tend to be a little bit of an insane day. (laughs) Yep, catching up. And I am a big proponent of like keeping it as streamlined as possible. So using filters, using tags just to mark what type of sources people are stuff like that. I'm a little bit OCD about it in order to keep my sanity. Mm. So wait, so in actual emails, you have a flagging system? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've created filters. So for example, I have Google alerts for a bunch of stuff. And in order to not have it clogging my inbox, like they go directly to a folder and I check them whenever I have time. I tend to tag emails from people depending on what type of source they are. So if I'm working on a piece about abortion and they are working in the space, I tend to tag it if it's about gender violence, politics, whatever is within my bead. And that kind of like helps me stay a little bit on top of who's who (laughs) and make sure that things do not fall through the cracks as much as I can. Mm, Are you an inbox zero person? I try to be. I'm not very yes. successful at it. Nah, it's okay. It sounds like you're trying. Yeah. 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 Okay. You strike me as someone difficult to pitch, perhaps, because quick scroll of your coverage area you're talking about abortion, you're talking about loneliness with your family, you're talking about union leadership. I mean, it, it is a lot. What's a good pitch for you? Yeah. So I am difficult to pitch. <laughs> to yeah. My role at the cut, the way that it was defined is like reporting on systems of power, which is like really broad. And what it means usually is that I am seeking out sources rather than really relying on pitches for my reporting. I will say, however, that in order for a pitch to be successful, it has to be within what I cover, right? Like I, it's just by virtue of being at the cut, I receive a ton of pitches about like beauty and fashion and lifestyle, which is amazing, but it's not what I report on. So those obviously, I tend to just ignore them or delete them, right? Yeah. But I think that the most successful pitches are the ones that are coming from someone who has a client or is working with an organization 
that's a really powerful story. Reporting on abortion, specifically uh, groups that work with people in the front lines of in this movement who are really trying to help patients access care. I think the connecting thread of my work is people. So anything that's really people-centered tends to catch my attention, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So people-centered. So it needs to be like narratives from people individually and what how it connects to people more broadly. Yeah. And I think a good example of this one piece I worked at recently, basically, we were just like looking at abortion funds and the work that they're doing. And I think that was most compelling about those stories is like how they interact, like, you know, like the human element of it. Obviously, we are not a hard news outlet or, you know, a daily Breaking news. Yeah, it's not a breaking news. news. Mm -hmm. So in many ways, we are trying to push conversations forward, give clarity to our readers. And a lot of that comes from like having conversations who are in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. Who are in the thick of it. So if you have clients that are in the thick of it, that's a good way to think of it. Then maybe that's a pitch for you. Okay. Subject lines. How important are those for you to open them? They're very important, as we kind of established my inbox is a little bit nuts. So really straightforward subject lines are best. I want to know upfront what it's about, especially since like we have to keep things moving, right? Yeah, you got to keep it moving. So subject line, and more specifically in a subject line, what are you looking to see? Why people are reaching out, right? Like, for example, this week I had a subject line that was like, story idea slash an organization that reached out. And that to me was kind of like, okay, what's the story idea? (laughs) Right? Like I making me click. Oh, you mean that you mean the subject line just was like story idea? Yeah. That was it? Yeah. And it was kind of like difficult, right? Because then I have to like go back and forth with this person and try to figure it out. But then I also had one that was like coffee shot with this person. And that's wonderful because I love doing this type of background conversations. So the fact that they're just like coming up front and offering it, telling me who it is, what organization they belong to. And then in the body of the email, giving them like a small bio, that was like really great. So yeah, straightforward as possible. Okay, straightforward as possible. We touched on this, well, no, no, we haven't gotten too much into it, but just sources. It was something I was just talking with with someone else. Any ideal sources where like, yes, I want to have this person in my inbox. I mean, the person who's in the thick of it. Okay. But academics, researchers, founders, I don't know, anyone that's like interesting to you, celebrities, you have a couple of celebrity type of things, but what would you say? Yeah. I would love to do more celebrity coverage as a way yeah, to, yeah, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> to take little breaks from uh, your <laughs> <Damn>. doom, <laughs> my doom break is a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. From the doom and gloom. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, like definitely love speaking with researchers and academics. I think that they tend to, I tend to use them a lot because they have, there's so much information out there that they help clarify. And I'm really interested in being able to match that human element with data, with things that support the stories and marry those two things. So definitely researchers, definitely academics. Authors, I love reading a a good book on interesting subjects. Advocates, like any sort of space. And then real, regular people. That's something that we try to do a lot of. So a good example of it is the IVF ruling in Alabama. Yes, in Alabama. Oh my gosh. So I had a conversation with a legal expert to cover that. And then one of my colleagues did a piece basically talking with people who were affected by the ruling, right? So more of that as well. And I think organizations that are usually doing advocacy are like really amazing at helping make those connections with people around who are on the ground. So yeah, like if if I can get pitched in that type of thing, like I am definitely interested. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everyday people, also celebrities and authors. Yeah. <laughs> For example, by the way, like this J.D. Barker, Racy, I was like, SpawnCon requests Rankle's book talk. I'm like, what SpawnCon suggested? Oh my God, I don't even know what that is. Okay, I got to read the piece. 
Look at me. Yeah, that was what I was saying, like a break from the rest of the yeah. coverage, right? Yeah. And definitely interested. I think at the card, we do really enjoy extremely niche drama and, yes. and trends, right? <laughs> extremely niche <laughs> drama. I love it. Anything in that space, like definitely piques our interest as well as an organization not just me <laughs> yes yes oh it must be fun chatter on your slacks and stuff oh my gosh oh yeah <laughs> oh my gosh definitely yes <laughs> today's interview will continue after this brief message brought to you by one pitch are you curious to learn about the unique ways one pitch helps brands engage with the right journalists head to onepitch.co and create your own custom media list in five minutes or less. Now back to today's episode. Okay, so speaking of authors and like lawyers and people who might be the sources you're looking for, how can anyone make a relationship with you, if at all? No, I love a good relationship with people who work in PR. I I think that we can be really beneficial to each other. I think my closest relationships with people who are spokespeople or or doing work in the space, they just happen gradually, right? Like having background conversations about their clients and also what, what I'm sort of looking for in a story and a lot of like trial and error, right? I sometimes get pitched stuff that it's interesting personally to me, but it's a little bit hard to visualize as a story, right? Like, an idea is not necessarily a story. A topic is not necessarily a story. So just developing the relationship, just having calls. I work remotely, but if I'm in New York visiting our offices, I like to go and meet with people in person as well. So yeah, it's, I love a good relationship with a peer person. I think we make each other's lives a little bit easier, you know? We can. How often are you in New York City? I mean, a couple of times a year, I think. Yeah, it's not too frequent, but sometimes I fly in a couple of times. That's good. Okay. What else have we not covered that you want to get out there, Andrea? Oh, I'm not sure. You're the one asking the question. I am. I just thought I'd give you the floor for a second. I just you know, wanted to give you some space. Well, here's one. Story approval process. So anyone who's a writer, a reporter, who's not you know the top, top editor, how is the story process approval, let's say the story approval done. For example, this JD Barker piece on the racy rom-com thing, like what does that look like? Yeah. So that was an assignment. I think that came from our news editor. They just needed someone to cover that. But with my main editor, Catherine Thompson, who is our power features editor, it's a constant conversation, right? So whenever something catches my attention, or there's something happening within the beats I cover, whether that's politics, abortion, gender in general, I just tend to DM her and be like, hey, what do you think about this? Uh, For bigger stories, usually features, and there's like a little bit of more pre-reporting that I need to do, gotta think of a headline, gotta think of an angle. And for that, I think that we usually just like sit down and, and have conversations about what we visualize, right? Is this like a 3,000 word piece or is this something that's like closer to 1K that we can turn around in like two days, you know? Got it. So good conversation back and forth, dialogue happening. Okay. Andrea, I have a quick rapid fire question series. Are you ready? Yes. (laughs) Okay. Video or phone interview? Phone interview with experts or advocates or anything that's like quick turnaround, but video for longer, more sensitive subjects. Mm, for more sensitive subject, I've never heard that response before. What? Why? Because you want to be able to see a person, right? I think that reading emotional cues it's really important, and I tend to cover really heavy stuff, right? Whether that's domestic violence, sexual assault some topics that require anonymity. So being able to read the room as much as I can if I'm not in person. And I prefer video over phone for those. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is not on the rapid fire, but I just wanted to throw it out there. What do you do for your own sanity slash self-care? 
<laughs> Great question. Therapy is very important. Therapy, um, I love yes. My therapist. I love reading fiction and a non heavy stuff. So, a book that's coming out soon that I'm actually doing a small profile of the author is Sachil Gonzalez, Anita de Monte Laughs Last. It comes out on March 5th. And that was like a really fun book, right? So, that's what I'm kind of like looking for in order to break myself away from my phone and all the heavy stuff that's going out in the world. Okay, good. So books and therapy. Yeah, very important. <laughs> plus plus. Okay, back to our rapid fire questions. Bullet points or paragraphs and pitches? Bullet points. I want to be able to skim as I go. <laughs> skim as you go. Okay, great. Short or long pitches then? Short. How short or long? Okay, how short? A few sentences. If I'm not able to communicate a story to my editor in a few sentences, she's going to say no. <laughs> Images attached or a Dropbox zip file? Attach because the zip file, as soon as I download it, it's going to get lost in my computer. And I don't like clutter as we established earlier. Email or XDM? Email. DMs are kind of like even a hotter mess than my email. So <laughs> One follow-up or multiple? I would say two follow-ups. And then if I don't respond after two, I'm probably not interested. Okay. Direct or creative subject lines? Direct as much as possible. Yeah. Yes. That's what we talked about that. Okay. Press release or media kit? I think a press release. Okay. Time that you normally read pitches. Now you told us a little bit, but just to emphasize. Yeah. Usually first thing in the morning before I write, I usually do a quick checkup at noon just to make sure that nothing got lost. And then in the evening before I log off is the last thing I do. You mentioned you don't look during the weekends. Is that a newer habit you're practicing or what happened with that? Just to keep your sanity? Yeah. Yeah. I think that because I'm not breaking news reporter, I think I am able to take a little bit of space, I think, away. I still keep on, obviously keep an eye on <laughs> headlines and stuff and like file stuff away. But I feel like if I go down the rabbit hole of my inbox on the weekends. It's not. It's just not good for anyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm with you on that. Okay. Okay. We talked about the timing of the pitches. We talked about the sources. Last words, Andrea, are there any things we can promote, highlight, celebrate for you, send you books for? Please send me all the books. <laughs> as long as they're fun fiction, as I would say, right? Fun fiction. We don't want heavy stuff on memoirs of abortion, perhaps, you know? Yeah. Nonfiction is fine if they are good to do interviews. Like we just published an interview with a sociologist about adoption. And I, I loved her book since I learned so much. So anything that feels like that. But yeah, no, we just published our spring fashion issue. And I'm really proud of the work that the cut does and, and our my teammates did. So you should check it out. If you haven't, I'm sure you've seen some of those stories already on the internet. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Yes. Mm. Andrea, thanks for being here today with us, especially in this, let's say, busy period time of the coverage you're doing. I really appreciate it. And I know we all do. So really appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you so much, Rick. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Coffee with a Journalist episode featuring Andrea Gonzalez Ramirez from The Cut. For more exclusive insights about the journalists on this podcast, subscribe to our weekly podcast newsletter at onepitch.co forward slash podcast. We'll see you next week, but until then, start great stories.